Hey, everyone. Thanks for coming. Orrin Klein, Auction Advisors, and... Taratha Tarat Sain, Auction Advisors. Really appreciate everybody joining us today. Today, what we decided to do, a little bit different than our typical speed networking event. We've decided, A, to do it during lunchtime. And the second thing is we're going to have our own Josh Olshin from Auction Advisors. He's going to be talking to Joe Schwartz uh, at uh, Bankruptcy, Chair of Bankruptcy. He'll introduce himself at Riker Danzig. So we're going to do that for about 10 minutes, and then we're going to get into the speed. And then, you know what? Tarat and I will jump back on. Uh, and then explain how the speed networking portion is going to go. And that's going to be in exactly approximately 10 minutes or when we grow bored of Josh and uh, Joe, of course. We could pull them off. So I'm now going to bring Josh up, add him to the stream. I'm going to add Joe Schwartz and remove myself. And good luck. Guys. All right. Good Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm Joshua Olshin, Managing Partner at Auction Advisors. So I want to explain where putting on this uh, few minutes of uh, an interview as a lead into the networking. I'm here with uh, Joe Schwartz. He'll, I guess, introduce himself in a moment. Um, and uh, we're going to spend a few minutes chatting about bankruptcy trends. Uh, and then we're going to move on to the networking. So, Joe, go ahead and introduce yourself, please. Thanks, Josh. And, and thanks, Oren and, uh, and Tarad and team. And you know, um, Oren said that um, I'm supposed to speak for 10 minutes or until people get bored of me. I hope it's not until people are going to get bored of me or the alternative, because then I'll be speaking for hours. Um, but so I am a, I'm a partner with Riker Danzig. We're a um, full service law firm in Marstown, New Jersey. We have offices other places as well. I chair the bankruptcy group there. I'm also the uh, incoming president for New Jersey Turnaround Management Association. I'll become the president on January 1st of 20, 2022. And so I've been doing bankruptcy and restructuring work for about 30 years. Okay, with that, let's get started. So uh, I think most people on the call know bankruptcy uh, numbers and filings are, are down significantly this year. Um, you know, there is some hope that it's going to have an uptick next year in 2022. Um, but Joe, what, maybe anecdotally, can you speak a little bit about what you're seeing in the marketplace um, and, and where, 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 where things seem to be going? Sure. Um, so um, in, insolvencies and restructurings and bankruptcies were very busy in uh, 2020, uh, particularly um, after the, uh, the onset of COVID. Um, and so during the, um, the first few months of 2020 into the summer, even into the beginning of the fall, um, chapter 11s were, were generally up or, or at least, um, you know, fairly busy sub chapter five cases, which is a subset of, of chapter 11 cases. And I'm a sub chapter five trustee. Those were also very busy. Um, the, the legislation had been passed in February of 2020, um, making sub chapter five, a part of, uh, chapter 11. And so there was an, there was a flurry of activity in the sub chapter five world, um, in the beginning and through the middle of, uh, 2020. Restructurings during that time period had increased uh, as a result of COVID service industries such as retail spiked. And so um, bankruptcy was pretty busy um, through the summer of 2020. And then starting in about the fall of 2020, September, October, um, activities in the restructuring and bankruptcy side slowed down considerably. And from late 2020 through the present, restructurings and bankruptcy have been fairly quiet. Um, the data backs this up as the number of corporate bankruptcies in Chapter 11 cases have been substantially down in 2021 as compared to prior years. Um, <clears throat> all that said, um, I'd, I'd say luckily I and my team at Riker have been fairly busy over the past year. Uh, I'm still working on a number of subchapter 5 cases um, because, uh, you know, there's only a, a small pool of subchapter 5 trustees that have been appointed in New Jersey. I'm also involved in a number of mass tort bankruptcy cases. Uh, and those cases are very prevalent right now. And those cases are cases like Purdue Pharma, Mallinckrodt, which um, are big chapter 11 cases that have that were filed as a result of opioid, the opioids crisis. Um, there's also sexual uh, abuse met a mass tort bankruptcy cases. I'm involved in, in one of those in New Jersey as well called the Diocese of Camden. Um, and as we all know, the J&J &J subsidiary um, LTL Management LLC was very recently transferred from the Western District of North Carolina to New Jersey, and that uh, bodes well for a lot of New Jersey 
bankruptcy practitioners, um, and that was in result to the uh, as a result to the ta uh, talc um, mass tort crisis with respect to J and J. Um, finally, the uh, the commercial real estate industry is having its issues. Um, as many commercial tenants were not paying rent as a result of the pandemic, landlords in turn were not paying their making their debt service payments to their lenders. Um, hotels were having um, their it's their own issues. Uh, these issues are still being addressed and still being worked through. Um, there were moratoriums in place throughout 2020 that were enacted both at the state and federal level uh, with respect to commercial evictions and commercial foreclosures. Uh, there were and continue to be extensions of maturity dates and forbearance arrangements that are in place and are being negotiated. Um, and against this backdrop, money remains really cheap. Um, financing is generally available. Um, the loan to own lenders are out there and ready to pounce. Um, however, while um, uh, there have been a few bankruptcies filed here and there, um, the wave that a lot of insolvency practitioners had predicted has not yet um, happened and uh, who knows whether it will happen, but, you know, at being a bankruptcy practitioner or a restructuring lawyer, you know, we, we in the restructuring industry hope that that wave does in fact happen, but uh, we're like a hedge fund, you know, we want, we want things to be good. And we also want the, uh, the bankruptcy world to, uh, to get busy. Right. Well, what, what do you think may change it? I guess you're saying, uh, you know, it's been, uh, a uh, loose regulatory regime coupled with uh, let's call it a lot of liquidity out in the system. Uh, that's been, you know, and you mentioned, you know, in terms of numbers, I had heard actually bankruptcy in the 12 months ended, I think in July, we, we hadn't been so low, the number of filings since 1985. So uh, so certainly that, that that's certainly going on there, but what do you think may change that um, going forward? Any, any thoughts on, you know, sort of where, where, what, what could change that and what could cause more filings and in what, what sectors? Yeah, you know, so so, so bankruptcy um, generally results, you know, everybody hears the, the phrase bankruptcy is the, is the last resort and um, bankruptcy um, only happens when there is something bad about to happen. Um, you know, you are about to get a, a negative um, judgment against you. You're about to get um, evicted. You're about to get foreclosed on. So, something is going to happen, or, or else your creditors are just you know there's there's a the deluge of, of of tort claims against you or something like that. And so you know bankruptcy is used as a legal tool to to you know try to slow things down to try to put you know some sort of strategy in place, a legal strategy. Um, and so um, right now um, there hasn't there hasn't been any sort of triggering. Um, because of the moratoriums, because of uh, of all the protections and regulatory issues that have been put in place to protect uh, the economy, and so uh, interest rates being so low for so long have ca has caused uh, money to be available, has caused um, um, defaults to not uh, be you know to, to to not have occurred as as regularly as in the past. Things like you know private equity, which has been around for a long time, and hedge funds, which has been around for a long time have also changed the landscape with respect to bankruptcy as um, your typical bank debt is no longer what's, you know, they're, they're not the, the typical creditors in cases anymore for the most part. Um, and so, um, so that's, that's sort of a backdrop as to why bankruptcy has been so slow. That, that's a very high level simplistic view, but nonetheless, that those, those are some of the reasons. Um, I, I mean, at some point in, in, in time, um, and this has happened throughout history and in my lifetime practicing for 30 years, there's been cycles where, you know, you have um, time periods where bankruptcy is slow uh, and then and then all of a sudden it picks up because there are certain sectors of the economy that have their problems or because um, things like money being unavailable, interest rates spiking up a little bit, um, things like that cause bankruptcies to, to occur. And so, um, you know, everybody's predicting that there, everybody had predicted there was going to be a deluge of bankruptcies in 2020 as a result of, of COVID. Um, there, uh, as a result of the various regulations that were put into effect, the CARES Act and and the PPP loan landscape and things like that, that that, that never really occurred. Um, I, I hope that that things change a little bit and that um, the good businesses um, rise to the top of the of the of the coffee in the, in the as cream, whereas um, the small businesses or midsize or even large businesses that are not strong businesses but are holding on by refinancing and and pretending that they're good businesses 
will will uh, certainly shake themselves out at some point and and bankruptcy will will occur and the economy will go through through its natural cycle again and i and i don't expect that to happen you know tomorrow but i but i do expect it to happen in relatively short order well what one other way in which we could kind of sort of be true to the business cycle yet not have a rash uh, or a wave of increase in bankruptcies might be uh you know the rise of alternatives quote quote alternatives to bankruptcy and curious what your, your thoughts are on that things like going through an abc or or just other types of non-bankruptcy alternatives to effectively bankruptcy what do you uh think about that yeah I, you know um my, my view of bankruptcy versus non-bankruptcy is different than some others and i practice more in the restructuring chapter 11 space and when you're talking about alternatives you're mostly talking about liquidations as opposed to reorganizations or restructurings after seven years, you know, yeah and, and and so 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 things like abcs or receiverships they're they're more akin to chapter seven bankruptcies and when i first started practicing back in the 90s chapter seven bankruptcies were very popular and they were used uh, unfortunately i guess um for chapter seven bankruptcy um you, you don't know who your chapter seven trustee is going to be and um and so the over the last x number of years there's been um a a rush or or a strategy um to instead of filing a chapter seven where you there's a lot of uncertainty involved particularly with respect to who you're going to get as your fiduciary the the, the there's been a rise in in the alternatives such as abcs and and i think that's warranted to some extent but at the same time um you know it, it's it there's not as much oversight and so there's problems with that as well great all right with that we're going to wrap it up